Where are Jenkins jobs stored? Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.387.1. On this controller, I have three different jobs set up. One of these jobs, the multi-branch jobs, has a sample repository associated with it. The link to that sample repository is down in the description. So let's take a look at these three jobs real quick. I have a freestyle job, a pipeline job, and a multi-branch job. The freestyle job is a basic freestyle job, no integration with Git, and we're just saying echo hello out to a hello.txt file, and then finally we are archiving that file off. If we take a look at the pipeline job, the pipeline job is just a declarative pipeline job that does the exact same thing as the freestyle job. We can see that we're echoing out hello to hello.txt, and then we are archiving hello.txt. If we go back over to our dashboard and click on multi-branch, what we'll see is we have three branches here. These three branches map to the three branches that are in, this is Jenkins example job storage repository. If we take a look at this Jenkins file, this Jenkins file is the exact same Jenkins file that we had inside of our pipeline job. So in summary, the freestyle job, the pipeline job, and the multi-branch job all run the exact same job. So where are these files stored? The directory that we want to go into is our Jenkins home directory. Now on this controller, the Jenkins home directory can be found at manage Jenkins and configure system. And at the top of the page, we can see that the home directory is var lib Jenkins. So let's go inside of var lib Jenkins. So we'll cd to var lib Jenkins. And if we take a look inside of this directory, we'll see lots of files and lots of folders. But the folder that we're interested in is jobs. So let's go ahead and cd into jobs. If we go ahead and take a look inside of jobs, we'll see freestyle, multi-branch, and pipeline. These three directories map back to our job names. So let's first take a look at freestyle. So if we go back into our controller and look at the run for freestyle, what we'll see is that the job ran fine. We see the text here for the console log. Everything seems pretty normal. Let's see how this maps out inside of the controller. So we'll go back over to the controller and I actually have the tree binary installed. So I'm gonna use tree and type freestyle. And what we're gonna see here is that we have a builds directory for our freestyle job and we see build number one. Well, if we take a look back over here, we can see that we are in build number one. We can see the definition of the job is inside of config.xml. If we were to cat out the config.xml for freestyle, we're gonna see the definition of what the job is. And if we take a look at it, we'll see our shell step where we're echoing out hello. And we'll also see an archive publisher that's gonna take care of archiving our file for us. Let's clear this out. Let's take a look again at freestyle. We also have next build number, so we're keeping track of what the next build number is. There's permanent links and legacy IDs. If we were to say cat freestyle builds permalinks, we're gonna see what the permalinks are for the jobs. We can actually map these back in the UI under freestyle. So we can see the permalinks section. So the permalinks file maps back to the permalinks section. If we look inside the one directory, we'll see an archive directory that has our hello.txt. We have the build XML and the change log and the log. So if we were to cat out freestyle builds one log, we're gonna see the output of our log. And finally, in this directory, what I want to show is the freestyle builds one build.xml. And for the build XML, this is everything around that build, build number one. So we can see when it started, we can see how long it ran. In this case, it ran for 2.893 seconds. We can see where it was built on. We can tell which workspace was used. We can also tell which version of the controller was when this ran and then a couple of other fields that are also associated for the freestyle job. So I spent a little bit more time on freestyle just so you could see all the different things because there's a lot of commonality between all of the Jenkins jobs. But now let's go and take a look at pipeline. So let's clear this out and let's do tree pipeline. Now notice the similarities here. First off, we see a builds directory. We see our one because we have run the job once. So let's go take a look at pipeline here. We have one job. We've got the permalinks. We see our artifact like we did over in freestyle. We see a stage view here, but stage views are associated to pipelines, so that's gonna be a little bit different. Let's go back over to our console. We see our archive directory, just the same as what we saw in freestyle. 
along with its hello.txt. We see the build XML, the log, the log index, which is a little bit different. We see workflow. So within pipeline, there's this concept of workflow. And each of these are breakdowns of the steps that happen within this pipeline. Now by step, I don't necessarily mean the step that you've defined within the pipeline, but these are the breakdowns of things that are happening as the pipeline is executing. The one file that I really want to take a look at is build XML. Remember with freestyle, and in fact, let's just go ahead and pull it back up, cat freestyle build one build XML. A fairly short file. If we were to take a look at it, it's probably 20, 30 lines. Not very, very long. But let's take a look at this from a pipeline perspective. So we'll say cat pipeline builds one build XML. Now notice that this one is a much, much longer, but the concepts are still basically the same. What we'll see here is we'll see flow build, which is actually for workflow job, which is a pipeline job. We see cause action, which was in freestyle, then we get into the execution model action. This is as the job is running for a declarative. Pipeline model definition is a declarative pipeline. Then you can see all of the things that happen within this pipeline. Now, similarly to what we saw in freestyle, we see a start time, we see a result, and then we also see the definition of our pipeline. We can see the script that we defined within our job. Now this time we did not pull in the Jenkins file definition from an SCM. This was just typed into the job definition. We can also see the durability hint, which is max survivability. So unlike freestyle, there are some fields that are within this file that are specific to pipeline. Again, one more time, if we were to do a tree pipeline, many things look the same as freestyle, but there are some things that are different because it is pipeline. Now, finally, let's move on to multi-branch. One thing to keep in mind with multi-branch is that it is basically a folder of pipeline jobs. Each of our branches are a pipeline job. So let's go and take a look at multi-branch. What we'll see here, again, we're gonna see patterns pop out that look similar to both freestyle and to pipeline, but there are some differences because this is multi-branch. So if we were to take a look at the top level, instead of going from in this case with pipeline, where we go from pipeline to builds, we now go to multi-branch branches because it's a multi-branch. We see branch and then we see builds. In this case, I have branch one, branch two, and main. So main's another branch. Within each of those branches, then everything starts to look a little more normal. We see our builds directory, we see our config XML, we see next build number, plus we see a few other items here because we are pulling in the definitions for this job from an SCM. So we see some extra files that are associated back to the SCM. We also see a state XML and an indexing at the top level of the multi-branch job. Now let's focus for a moment on the main job. We see builds, we see one, we see our archive of hello.txt. Again, that has been consistent through freestyle, through pipeline, and now through multi-branch. We see a build XML, we see a changelog. The changelog is related because we are pulling this in from an SCM, unlike what we did with either freestyle or with pipeline. Log, log index, workflow, those are all similar from pipeline because again, a multi-branch is a folder of pipeline jobs. Let's take a look at our build XML for the main. So I'm gonna cat out multi-branch, branch, main, builds, one, build.xml. Let's see what this looks like. Now this is going to look a little bit different, in fact, a lot different than what we saw with pipeline. Because the multi-branch is defined to pull in its definition from the SCM, we see this checkouts. And this checkout was checking out from the repository, Jenkins example job storage. And we can see here in this case, it's pulling in the main branch. If we scroll up some more, we can see that this was completed. We see the execution information for this job, but we can also see here that the pipeline script that came in from our repository, this is what was being executed. And again, much like the previous other job types, freestyle and pipeline, we have timestamp, start time, result, duration. All of these are common between all the different job types. If we keep scrolling up, we'll see more information that's associated to this job run. Now, why is this one so much longer? Again, the pipeline job that we ran we just went in and defined the job within the Jenkins UI. For the multi-branch job, we're pulling in the job definition, the Jenkins file, from our repository and letting it run within our controller. So that's why the information 
that's in this build XML is much, much longer than anything we've seen up to this point. So here's the thing to keep in mind, whether it's freestyle, whether it's pipeline, whether it's multi-branch, or maybe even an organization job type. If you go in and take a look at the file system, you're going to see a structure that builds over time. So hopefully this answers your question on where are Jenkins jobs stored? If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.